Hey everyone, this is Daniel and this is going to be my last video for this year, which is 2019. And I thought I'll end it by putting in the fifth version of my Power Apps Hidden Gem series. So in this one over here, I am going to talk about uh, the following. Uh, and this is four items over here. One is I'll show you how you can use the request hide feature to go, especially for SharePoint customized forms when you use a patch function. Um, how to use the scrollable screen I and mean, how to get it. Um, I'm also going to show you how you can take an app and then add it to Teams. And then finally, disabling the scale to fit so that your app can actually fill up the entire screen over there. So now that you know the four things I'm going to cover, let's jump into it. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to talk about the first thing is the request to hide feature. Um, and you must be wondering, what is this request to hide feature? It actually is a expression which is available, or a formula. It's available uh, in Power Apps. And it works really well for a SharePoint customized form, and I'll show you a scenario. So in this case, take a look at this SharePoint online list that I have. Um, I just call that list as a hidden gems or hidden features five. Um, the list is pretty simple and straightforward because that's not the emphasis of this one. The emphasis is what does that request uh, hide, hide does. So let me show you because I've already worked on a little bit of the app already. Um, and if you guys are interested in how I've done the patch function, I've got a whole series of that already available. I've also put links to it in the uh, um, description down there. So you can go ahead and click on that. Um, uh, my article is called as Building Power Apps from Scratch, Use Patch. Uh, and then there's other ones I've built over there where you know you the manage metadata connections, however you want to use those. It's, it's all listed over there. And since I have it built, I'm not emphasizing on the patch function. I'm just emphasizing on the app over here. So the app is pretty simple and straightforward. As you can see, it has SharePoint integration, which means the data is coming from SharePoint. But in this case, what I did is I actually ignored the form screen one, which is built out of the box. Um, I'm just making it a little nicer looking uh, app over here. Um, and I know it's not that nice, but the emphasis again is not the app. Is What I did was I, I ignored the form screen one and I went ahead and did it from a blank canvas, dropped all the columns and I mean, all the uh, fields over here. Now what's happening is in the SharePoint, when I go to the app over here, and when I go to, well, I'll just on SharePoint integration, when I go and do was on save, I've gone ahead and put in my patch function. Um, and again, not the emphasis of the, what the patch function does, but in this case, what it does is it just takes all the data from here and puts it in SharePoint. So now that you've seen it, I mean, I can go back and close it. Um, and let's go take a look at the uh, form over here. So when I click on new, you can see that that nice looking customized form shows up over here. And I can go ahead and put in some information. This is Daniel Christian, Power Apps Maker, Design Department is Innovation, um, Techie World Employee Type, I'll put myself in as a permanent, and the phone number I'll put in the same one I see over here. And so the data, I've gone ahead and submitted that. But now with the customized form with a brand new, brand new canvas, when I hit save, what happens is the data shows up over there, but the form doesn't close. Uh, and this kind of bugged me for a while because I said, well, they're almost there. The data is almost being stored. Why isn't the form not closing? Because what I would have to tell people is that go ahead and click on save and then you got to close the form. And that's just not very user friendly. because Once they hit the save button, the form should all, all automatically be closed and the data should show up over here. And we're almost there. And so once I inquired and I learned from a few folks that there's actually a very simple trick to that and I'll show you what that trick is. So I'm gonna come over here to the customized form and I go back over here and at the end of your entire patch function, you go ahead and hide the put in the request hide function and you open the brackets and you close the brackets and that's what closes the form. It's actually as simple as that and I'm gonna show it to you. So I'm gonna click on the skip I'm going to go to SharePoint integration. I'm going to click on on save. And then right at the end of everything that's happening over here, I hit semicolon and I do request hide and it shows up over here. The bracket opens up and I'm going to click on uh, save over here. I mean, I'm going to close the bracket. And for myself, I'll go ahead and also put in a version two. So I know 
the change that happened. Yep, I'm gonna do a save and publish. It's saving, saving to Power Apps, part of the customization form. It's gonna go ahead and close it, redirect me back to the SharePoint list. And now let's go ahead and do another test. So I'll click on New. And see, as you can see, some, it still shows that version 1.0 because it just takes a few extra seconds for this thing to you know, refresh. So what you can do is you can just refresh the entire SharePoint list over here, click on new, and just give it a second. Yep, that's the nice new version over here. And I'm going to now say Jane Doe, Power Apps Guru. Um, also here, find HQ, let's just put an HQ. She is also permanent, and the phone number is 555-555-1234. And now when I hit save, see what's going to happen. The data got stored, and the customized form closed. So that is as easy as that. Is That's how you use the request hide feature. Remember, this only is needed when you create a blank canvas in the customized form and do all your customization, which in my case was the patching functionality. Everything works, you know, you go ahead and do all that functionality, but just to close the form, you gotta use the request hide feature. So that's the first one, is how to use the request hide feature. Now, let's take a look at the scrollable screen. So in the scrollable screen over here, I'm going to actually create a quick little example. And what I've done is, I've got this, uh, let me take a look to see which one it is. Um, I think it's in the hidden gems, let me take a look. In this case, what I'm, I want to show you is that how, when, especially in mobile apps, it's a really great example of in the mobile apps over here, I've got all this information, right? I've gone ahead and built an app, and I, you know, I'm already populating and filling in all this information, but I'm slowly running out of space over here. And so what I want is now I want the scrolling functionality where I can keep adding more and more visual, I mean, components over here, more and more, you know, all these controls but then very automatically I should also get the scrolling functionality. Now out of the box, it will, it, when you start having, you know, create a blank screen over here, that scrolling functionality doesn't show up. What you do need to do is you can go ahead and create, create your blank screen, and then next you wanna come over here to new screen, and you wanna click on the scrollable. So when you click on the scrollable, it provides this functionality called Canvas 1, and by default it also adds the data card 1. So now that you've got this, you can actually go ahead and copy it. And then you come back to your new screen or whatever screen you're working on. And you can do a control V uh, and you've pasted it. And then by default, you've got that canvas, you've got the scrolling functionality and you've already got a data card one. So from here onwards, I can go back to whatever I started building, you know, select those control C and I can go ahead and drop them into my data card over here and keep, keep adding those. Now, other trick over here in the uh, scrollable screen for each and every data card, it is not mandatory that for one data card you can only add one set of information, but in this case it's just the full name. Uh, you can add multiple things in that one data card. A uh, couple of things that I do is that if I'm building a form, it needs employee contact information, which is their first name, last name, email address, you know, phone number, department, and everything. I put all that information into one data card, um, and you can see that it just makes it a lot easier because now in that data card, um, I can you know add a whole bunch of stuff to it and then it kind of compresses all of that into just one data card and also helps me to make that naming convention I can, you know, by just saying that employee information data card yep, over here. Next, I can click on add new section. When I click on add new section, it automatically creates another data card for me. And then that data card over here can put in other like job information, uh, and then from here, I can go back to the other place over there. I can go ahead and put in other information, you know, copy all of that, come back over here to this person, select on that. And it also helps to go ahead and expand it ahead of time. And when I click in it and I hit paste, all of this comes in over here. So one of the features over here is if I go in, it's just, you know, for grins and giggles, but just to prove a point, I'm going to start pasting more stuff in over here keep adding in, pasting more stuff. If you notice, the scrolling bar automatically shows up. So let's watch, take a look at the difference. In this case over here, when I see on that first screen and I go ahead and hit play, I don't have that scrolling functionality. Now, when I've demoed this to people, they say, oh, well, Daniel, I've actually seen a scroll bar over here. Just go ahead and minimize the window and the scroll bar appears. Sometimes it appears, sometimes it doesn't appear. 
Now that scrolling is not the same scrolling which will be available in the app. That's just to temporarily provide a option in the browser to see where your data is. But it's not the same scrolling functionality which you need where a lot more controls have been added and you want the end user to have the functionality to be on that same screen, but also to scroll. That is why you want to use that scrolling functionality. But now when I go to the screen two over here, see I actually have that scrolling bar available. So I know I did it a little quickly and I you know, just took some examples, but the key thing over here is that you want to go and get that screen and go get that canvas scrolling um, component or that you know a, a function over there. You can copy and paste that anywhere and then it is not a requirement that for one data card, you can only put one set of information. You can put in as much information as you want. In fact, I've seen people put in a bunch of stuff, everything in just one data card, and it works. Um, I just kind of tell that, you know, for each data card, put in a specific information. And like you can see for my data card, I just put in the first section, first name, last name, just the name part of it. Second data card was the job information and all of that. So it kind of helps you break it down and, you know, for your own peace of mind for coming back in the future to fix it. So that was the second thing, is the scroll to Teams functionality. Let's look at the third thing, which is adding it to Teams. So for adding it to Teams, um, let's actually take this example, and I'll go ahead and delete that over here. I'll delete this one as well. So we just have a nice looking screen. Um, let's see, I've got, yep, this is a, this is a good one. So let me just um, save that. And what I need to do now is I can go ahead and publish it. And the the uh, basic idea is that from the Power Apps, you want to go ahead and export that to a Teams um, as a solution. Well, the solution is basically just a zip file. And then you can go to Power App. I mean, not Power Apps. You can go to Teams and then import that solution in over there as an app. So let me show you how that works. I'm going to go ahead and close this. Get out of here. Go back to my apps. It's got to be that one. Now I click on the ellipses, which over here shows more commands. And then there is the functionality which says add to teams. So I'm going to click on that, which is add to teams. And see these two things. I mean, this this uh, you know information bar that opens up. It says to add your app to teams, review and document your app as a zip file. And then it says review and download your app as a zip file. And then upload your app as a custom app to teams. The beauty I like over here is that they've already out of the box made the functionality to take your entire app. It goes ahead and makes the whole thing as a app, a custom app, all put together as a zip file, and it gives you the functionality to download it. And then in Teams, you can go ahead and upload that all as an app. So they've done that, you know, together all out of the box. So you don't have to do any custom work on your side. So now I'm going to go ahead and click on download app. And it goes ahead and creates it, and it's all it says uploading your app to Teams. This is how you do it. Go ahead and you know go to Teams, and I'll show you how to do that. But it has gone ahead and created it, and now I'm actually downloading it in my site. So it's downloaded, uh, and it'll be in my download folder. In fact, if you see on the bottom left, it's gone ahead and created that zip file. So now that I'm done on the Power App side, I'm going to now go into my Teams. And for the sake of this example, I've just used the web interface. You can do this on your desktop as well. So I come over here. Um, I actually go, yep, yeah, come over here. I click on uh, apps section, sorry, over here. And upload a custom app. I click on that, upload an app. And here's the one. That's the one I just downloaded. So I'm going to click on that, click on upload. And over here, as you can see, it is uploading. So it goes ahead and uploads it. It's uploading. So let it finish, let it do its thing. It's uploading it, making sure it works on the team. It adds it as a team's custom app. So whatever it's doing, let it let it finish on its own over there. Uh, might work a little faster if I had the desktop app, but in this case, it's all working on the browser, which is fine. So let's just finish this off. And once it's done, it'll all show up on the section over here. So the Hidden Gems 5, that's the one that I just uploaded. So now I can click on the, uh, actually I can just click on the entire app. And it says that the app is uploaded to your, your place. Do you want to go ahead and add it? So I say, yes, I'll go ahead and add it. And then after it is added, it just validates to see, hey, here's your app, and it's going to work. And the cool, cool thing about this is it already takes all your authentication and your authorization. So it's all built into it. Whatever you did on the Power App side directly works on your team side as well. I'm, I'm really happy with this. 
But let me just show you that now when I have the app, I can go to any of my teams. When I go to this, I have a team over there called business development. Now I can click on this plus over here. And on the plus, I can actually just quickly search for Power Apps. And on the Power Apps, when I click on it, um, actually, it's not this case. I can come back here and I can click on that and I can just search for Hidden. And Hidden Gems 5, as you can see, the Hidden Gems 5 was the one I just did it. I uploaded it, so I'm going to click on that. And it says, do you want to go ahead and add this? I say, yes, I go ahead and add it. And now it will show up over here as well. So, so yeah, description is good. Post to the channel about this tab. So I'm going to yep, save. It says, going ahead and setting up your Hidden Gems 5 tab, which is right over here. And voila, right there is your whole tab set up just by app. And it'll stay there. I mean, I can go ahead and look at my files. I can go and look at my posts. But the Hidden Gems 5 stays over there. So this was an example that I wanted to show of how we can go ahead and now take your app, export that as a zip, and it automatically goes ahead and creates an export, uh, which is going to work for Teams as a Teams custom app. Go to Teams, upload that, and it'll go ahead and add it as an app. Just go through the ma some verification process, and then you can pick and choose any of your team that you want, and then add that over there. So that was the third thing, which is going ahead and adding your um, Power Apps to Teams. Now, the last one that I want to show is disabling the scale to fit functionality in Power Apps. So for that, I want to actually do a quick demo over here. So what I'll do is let's come over here and I'll go ahead and create a simple app. So I'll do it as a mobile app so you guys can see it. And then I'll also kind of walk you through a little bit of things that you want to keep in mind. Again, I'm not deep diving into how you build a fully responsive app. That's a whole separate uh, piece altogether. And I've actually already done a video on that and I'll put that in the chat over here. Um, and I'll be adding more videos to that because responsiveness um, has improved. So I'll be building more on that. Uh, but in this case, I just want to show you how we can disable that functionality to give you the responsive app. So let's come over here and I will create this simple mobile app. Let's call this as uh, Hidden Gems 5 Responsive. Oh, let's do Disable Scale to Fit. And I'll, I like to change the icons. So it just gives it a little bit more design. Let's call this one. Come on, mouse. Yeah, let's just call it there. Save it. Let's add a little bit of a design to it because I want to show you guys something. Here, uh, label on the top. Change the color of that to something a little bit more nicer, center. Take that on the center, make that a little bit more bigger. Yeah, make it 30, 30, 32. Uh, disable scale to fit. Control C, Control V. And you guys know my favorite over here, my favorite footer text is always powered by Power Apps. Okay, so I'm just going to save that. And what I'm going to do is publish it, and now I'll go to the mobile app and I'm going to show it to you. So let me just open this up over here. Let me go ahead and um, open up Power Apps. In fact, I need to first save this so you guys can see it. Okay. Screen mirroring, I should be able to. There it is, there, there. Go ahead and grab Power Apps. And I call this one as Hidden Gems. So let's see if it shows up on the top. Nope, it didn't, so let me just type that in. Hidden. Right there. Hidden gems, um, disabled scale to fit. So I'll click on that. Now watch what's happening up over here. Let me actually go back out here. In this screen over here, you can see that it kind of it fills up the entire, you know, screen area away. Watch this section. You see from here to here, it's filling it all the way up. But when I go to the app that I've created, watch what happens. See, it has become a little smaller. 
that's because the scale to fit functionality is actually enabled right now. It's completely enabled, which is why it's making sure that the scale of the app, which is the text and everything is all in a scale. And right now it doesn't allow me to fill that up. And this is good, this is by design, because if you're just building a simple app, you want that scale to fit to be, ena um, to be enabled, because then your app will look nicely scaled, nice design and everything. But if you want to go ahead and disable that, then here's what you need to do. You kind of have to make that app a little bit more responsive um, and make it more you know, uh, pleasing to the eye. So to show you though, I'm going to go into the app. Um, I'm going to go to the screen and size orientation. And what I do is I go ahead and um, toggle off the scale to fit. Now when I toggle this one off, it automatically also toggles off the lock aspect ratio and that is by design. Uh, and then in this one, whether you want to lock the orientation, that's completely up to you. But I need at least these two things over here, which is the um, uh, at least the scale to fit that needs to be toggled off. And when you do that, this will go ahead and get off as well. So I'm going to now just do that. And I'm going to do apply to screen. So it goes ahead and applies it. And then the next thing is we got to go back over here and do a little bit of responsive design. So I'll show you the quick little tricks. And then you can go to my responsive side and look at the whole video. So we're here now on the top one, I'm gonna do the X and I'll leave the X as it is, which is zero, because by default it needs to be on the zero. What I'll do is on the Y, I'll leave that as zero as well. But what I need to do on the width is I'm gonna do the app dot and on this side, I'll just do the width. So it'll go ahead and populate the width side. So that's for the header. Let's take a look at the footer over here. On the footer, I'm going to do the same thing. Let the X be zero, but on the Y, I'm going to have to do a little bit of playing around. By default, it is 1066. I'm going to go to the app dot um, height. And in the height, even though here it looks like there's something available, what I need to do is height minus, and this is label one dot height. So it shows up over here nicely. And there's a reason for that, because if I just put an app height, this one will actually be not available in the app at all. You want to go and say that, hey, I want it as the app height, which is the entire app height, minus the actual labels height, which is why it will show up always at the bottom. That's what you need to do. And then the same thing for the width. I'm going to do the um, app dot width, and it will always show up. So now let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and do save, go ahead and publish. And then you can see that there will be a considerable difference. So now I come back over here, watch, see over here how it is. There's a bit of a gap over here. There's a bit of a gap. Now I'm going to go ahead and close this and just refresh it. And I'll click on that. In fact, on the top, it is telling me that a new version of your app is available. Tap to update now. I'm going to do that. Tap to update. And watch what happened over here. See that? It went ahead and made it nice and responsive. Now this is pretty cool. This is just a quick way for you to get started with getting it a little bit more responsive. But I do want to show you this one thing. First thing is this horizontal sliding thing, that's part of the your phone away. In my case, it's an iPhone XS. So it's part of that. So you got to factor in that when you're building the app, you want to make sure that this doesn't overwrite or you know come on top of the, um, or interfere with the text over there. But one thing which I don't see over here is on the iPhone, this section is by default going to be covered up by where the phone, by, by the where the, um, uh, the camera is. So let me show you that over here. When I click on, uh, let me go to a slide. You see, this is what the app looks like right now. You saw I even showed you the top thing, but when this app will actually be opened up in a phone your entire hidden gems number five will probably be overwritten because over here, now that it is responsive and the scale to fit has been disabled, your text will actually not show up. Over here and over here, you will probably see your purplish color over there and that'll be there, but your text will not show up. So you need to actually design your app in a more responsive way such that it'll, fa it'll factor in that your phone has actually got this design. Now remember in the app which shows a preview, that didn't show up, but when you open up this app in an actual device, this section will actually be going missing over here because of that. So keep that in mind. And the best way to always factor in that it works is keep testing it, keep testing it. 
So what I want to show you is another example of how I was able to build that. Um, here is a another app which I did was scale to fit. And you see, I actually factored that in. I went ahead and put in this information over here. I mean, I, I actually took away something because I factored in that this is going to be for an iPhone. There's actually a camera over there. So I took all of that off. Um, this app was built with the responsive design in mind. I went ahead and made sure that it populates the entire phone. And I also took the entire thing off. So if I can switch it over here, it will automatically fill. But that process is for another day. And I'll walk you guys through it. So all in all, these were the four things that I wanted to talk about. And just as a quick recap, we went ahead and talked about the uh, um, the request hide functionality over there. We went ahead and talked about the uh, scrollable screen section over there. Uh, we also went ahead and talked about the um, uh, adding to Teams. Remember how that worked? Zipped file, uh, exported from Teams, go ahead and upload that back into, I mean, uh, exported from Power Apps and upload that back to Teams. And then the disabling scale to fit that was the other one over there, which I walked you through it, that you've got to go ahead and disable that scale to fit over there. Um, but then I also showed you that what that's going to do is you've got to, first of all, make the app a little bit more responsive. So you're going to use that X and Y coordinates. You're going to use that app over there. Um, and I've actually walked you guys through it a little bit more detail. So go ahead and click on that link over there. But these were the four hidden gem series uh, that I wanted to show over here. And this is my last video for 2019. Um, I wish you guys a happy holidays and I look forward to all the new videos I already have planned for 2020. Thanks.